Thank you so much. Right. So just to let you know, this is a brand new honor that's just recently been introduced. In fact, it has this been introduced this year. It has been uh, a combination of uh, different people's work. And particularly, I would like to uh, commend uh, Padmore Bafur Apwa, uh, who actually created the um, our worksheet, which you have right now. Hopefully you have it in your hands so that we can go through it uh, one question at a time. Uh, the last presentation when we did this, I was also with Jonas Goncalves, so I would also like to thank him for uh, his work. So let's proceed. So this is our site honor. Our first one is an activity, and this is going to take two minutes because obviously we don't have a lot of time. I just want to tell you, everyone who's watching right now, if you have your parents with you, and if you think, you know, things are, there's too many words and it's too complex for you, take a photo of um, whatever slide we've got, or you can go back to it and replay it if you're having trouble catching up. So our very first activity is um, for you to actually ask someone to hide something, probably, I know because we don't have a lot of time, so probably just near you, but make sure that you're blindfolded or have your eyes closed and have that someone place something and uh, you're, going to, uh, you're going to look for that item. And that's blindfold. The second activity is Look for the item without any blindfold or with your eyes open. So if you have, uh, if you have your mom or your sister or brother with you, ask them to place something. So close your eyes and then ask them to place something in front of you or nearby so that you can look for this um, this item. Okay, shall we do that? Let's go. Two minutes. Are you having trouble? You've got your eyes closed, no peeking. The idea is, you know, to differentiate whether it's easier for us, of course, to find things when, with our eyes open. But sometimes, you know, we look for things with our mouths. Oh, my mom or my, you know, my Lola or my grandma used to say that to me. You look with your eyes, not with your mouth. Okay, how's everybody? Has it been difficult with your eyes closed or with blindfold? Okay, why don't you try now? Still ask someone to put that item near you and then look for it with your eyes open this time. Someone's going to join us. Leopards Mara. Okay, thank you. All right. So I, I hope you've actually appreciated that activity. It's very easy. Next, we're going to watch a video, which I'm going to ask my, my boy to give me a hand. Hopefully, this works. Oh, sorry. Oh, skip that one. It's there, it's there, it's there. Yeah, okay. If you... Yeah, play it, play it. Just give us a few seconds. Just because eyeballs are the size of ping pong balls doesn't mean they make good ping pong balls. A nerd cannot be blamed for his love of scientific exploration, my dear Chloe. It is what makes him a nerd. Then can we use the eyeballs to explore how an eyeball works instead? We could, but these are kind of small and... Squished. One might say that. How about we take a look at him? 
Most excellent idea! Let's do! The eyeball is a beautiful machine with lots of different parts working together to let you see. Poets say the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, the window to the eyeball is the cornea, a dome of clear tissue up in front of the eye that focuses light as it passes through. Look at that beautiful green eye! And brown eye! And blue eye! The colorful part is called the iris, right? Yep, it's right behind the cornea. In the middle of the iris is a black circle called the pupil, an opening that lets light into the eye. The iris has muscles attached to it that change its size, making the pupil bigger and smaller to control how much light gets through. So the pupil gets smaller when there's a lot of light and bigger when it's dimmer. Don't look now, but I think we're being watched. Mm. Oh, he blinked first. Which is a good thing. Blinking protects and moistens the eye. Good point. So what happens after the light has passed through the cornea and the pupil? The light passes through the lens. Like the lens in a camera? Precisely. The lens focuses the light onto the back of the eye, where seeing really starts to happen. Can the lens and the eye focus on stuff that's close and stuff that's far, like a camera lens would? It sure can. Let's head inside to see how. Last one through the pupils, a rotten egg. The lens is held in place by a bunch of fibers which are attached to the ciliary muscle. Ciliary, ciliary, ciliary. ciliary. The ciliary muscles change the shape of the lens to let the eye change its focus from something close by to something far away. What are you waiting for? Let's get focusing! To see something near, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thicker. To see something far, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thinner. From the lens, we travel to the retina, the back wall of the eyeball. Right, because the lens focuses the light onto the retina. The retina has millions of light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. About 120 million rods and 7 million cones in each eye. Whoa, that's a lot of rods and cones. What's the difference between them? It's the difference between black and white and color. The rods see in black, white, and shades of gray and help us see the shape and form of a thing. Rods also help us see in the dark. And the cones see color? Cones are sensitive to one of three colors, red, green, or blue. Together they let us see millions of colors. But cones need more light than rods to work well. Hey, what's this thing behind the retina? Hey, no bouncing on the optic nerve. It carries messages to the brain about what you're seeing. The rods and cones change the colors and shapes you see into millions of nerve messages. Then those messages are carried along the optic nerve to the brain. It's like your eye is sending the brain a report on what you're seeing. Then your brain translates the report into cat, apple, or bicycle. Or... A ping pong ball. Hmm? Keep your eye on the ball there, Nurb. Oh, <laughs> it's on. Okay, I know that's a bit fast, uh, but we will go through things anyway again so that you'll be able to understand it more. So we are now in. Okay, so that's letter B. We will proceed with our next slide, which is the function of the eye. So can you tell me, <laughs> can you tell me what are the, what are the functions of your eye that you appreciate the most? So yes, type then, it in. yes, we have the, our chat and let's find out uh, which one do you appreciate the most? Ability to see, 
or light perception or differentiate colors or gauge, uh, gauge depth. Um, and the same thing applies to our Facebook friends who are watching us as well. What would you, what, what do you appreciate the most, my friends? Let's find out. Okay, Ellen and Nicole say seeing. Well seeing. done. Seeing, great. Okay. Anyone Anybody else? else? Yes. What if you can only see all blue and no other colors? Well, the, the next answer is coming from Buntu and uh, we hear that ability to see and differentiate colors uh, are two important uh, functions uh, that they appreciate as well. That's great, that's great to know. Okay, so those are the functions of the eyes and I'm sure there's probably many more and I know that in heaven one day, it will be all heightened. Okay, next, how important is the eye, how important is our ability to see and different, different shape colors and all that. So one to four, we have avoid danger, form relationships, and we'll tell you all later why and how, heightened when, uh, sorry, three, heightened when other senses are not effective. Um, and, you know, this is one uh, sort of like, uh, you know, trying to compensate. So let's say, for example, if you cannot, if you cannot hear very well, sometimes your eyesight or your sense of smell is more heightened. So other senses actually try to, um, you know, make make do so that to you know to compensate with your lack of hearing, and other senses do the same. Okay, how big is the human eye? Have you got any idea how big is our human eye? Is anyone sharing? Um, not at the moment. Any uh, guesses? Okay, out. that's fine. Okay, so our human eye is apparently as big as our as a ping pong ball. So I'm sure many of you have seen a ping pong ball. So I'll, you know, with my hand like this, you can see, you can tell how big it is. Now, when you look at your eye right now, you can say, hang on a minute, my eye doesn't look that big. But if you feel, you know, like you've got your eyes there, if you feel, you know, just up here, you can feel the sort of like ball. And that ball is similar to this ping pong ball. Okay, so that's how it sort of like looks on the inside. You could probably see it's small, but behind it, it's actually like a ping pong ball. Okay, we had an answer, uh, Flori, that is three times the size of a pea. I think it, it's a little bit more than that, uh, according yeah, to what you showed. That's a good guess. That's a good <laughs> guess. Thank you so much for that. Okay, now we're going to label the eye parts. And I know that you've got in your worksheet the different, uh, you know, the lines and arrows that go to it. So the smallest, I will just uh, if you look at your screen, the smallest circle that you can see, the black dot, okay, that's what we call the pupil, which we heard earlier on, uh, is actually, you know, your, it dilates and constricts, or it goes, it gets bigger, or it gets smaller, depending on the light that we are exposed to. Okay, the next circle that you can see just outside your pupil is called the, the iris. So the iris, apparently, it's the one that makes the color in your eyes. So if your blue eyes, your green eyes, that will be your iris, okay? That makes the color. Right. On to your other, the other part of the eye, going to the inside part of the eye. So you have your iris there, the pupil is there. The cornea, as you can see, is the outer covering of your eye or the transparent film that covers your eye. But if it continues, if you look at, if, if you remember, actually you've got a white part in your eye, yeah? The white part, it's called sclera, and that's how it's spelled. That's the white part of your eye. And that white part of the eye, there, the covering there is called the conjunctiva. 
and that's how it's spelled. You will see later on when I say conjunctivitis, you will know which part of the eye is inflamed or has damaged or injury. Okay, and then you move on to the innermost part, which is kind of like an elliptical shaped object or structure that is called the lens. And depending on the lens, you will see later on, you know, whether are you short sightedness or are you far sighted? It depends on the lens and the cornea as well. So that lens is actually, it focuses the light onto the retina. And as you can see that part there, the retina is the back wall of the eye. And then that little thing where the girl was jumping onto is the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is actually the, you know, it carries uh, signals or impulses to go to the brain to tell us what we're looking at. So it's sending a report to the brain. One, one more thing that's part of the eye that you will, we will look at later on is what we call the ciliary muscles, which has been in the video as well. And this is very close to your, your lens, okay? It's kind of like trying to uh, widen your lens or shorten your lens, and that helps to actually stabilize your lens. Another part, which is kind of like um, very much nearer your lens, it's actually the muscles or the ligaments that actually holds your lens, which is called the suspensory ligament. So these all helps with us looking at things, okay? I know it's long, but don't worry, just put ligament if you're not sure. So these are the main important or the important parts of the eye. Next, we have the different functions of each part of these eye. I know you've got little squares in your worksheet and I can see it here on my other computer. So we will go from left to right on the screen and we will you know, write it down if you can. If you can't, this, uh, dear parents, if you can take a photo of this so that you can go back to it later on and write the things down, or if you can replay this video. All right, so from the left to right, top going down, we have, this is what we said earlier on, that is your ciliary muscles that con contracts to change lens shape, okay? So the lens, where it can actually lengthen it or it can shorten it to make it more round or it can uh, lengthen it or make it more oblongated, okay? Next, we have the transparent and focuses light. What do you think that is? Right, that is your cornea, just the very, you know, covering that that's here the very, very front of your eye, okay? That thin layer covering. Next one, changes size to control light. What changes uh, size to control the light? This is your iris, right? Okay, it controls the light or also, am I, am I right with that? Sorry, changes size. Yes, I remember. Um, if you actually are exposed to light, if you, or if you open your eyes like that, some your your pupils. This is your pupils that constricts if there's light, and it actually gets bigger when there's you know when there's a little bit dimmed area. So, so that changes size to control the light, <clears throat> and then the thing there. When I told you earlier about this supports the lens. This one is your suspensory ligament. Okay, it supports the lens. Okay, so if you can see that it looks like it's holding it. Okay, next moving on to the middle part, it focuses light onto the retina. This is your lens. Okay. And we will find out later on if there are problems with your lens that brings the light to the back wall of your eye, what is going to be the problem, okay? So that is your lens. Now, moving on to the most 
right part of that uh, screen from the top contains light receptor cells. Contains light re receptor cells are your are part of your optic nerve. Okay. And then the next one, tough outer coat or coat, sorry, tough outer coat. This is your retina or the back wall of your eye. Okay, this receives the light coming from the retina, uh, from your lens. And then the last part, the bottom part, which looks like a, uh, like a rope that carries impulses to the brain, that is your optic nerve. Okay, and I think that completes, you know, the different functions of, of the parts of your eyes. Okay, now next, next slide. We have a lens in each of our eyes. So the red uh, writing here is the answer to the question. And I think in your worksheet, this is probably number three. How do the lens work? We have a lens in each of our eyes, and this is a convex lens. Okay. All right. I hope you're writing it down. And I actually put here the diff, uh, you know, the different shape of concave and convex because it will matter later on in the presentation. If you have a convex um, eyes or the lens, it, it would differ if it would differ when it comes to how we look at things. And as you can see there, uh, and we will explain this later on, if you have a convex lens, you know, when you look at things, it actually, you know, as the light gets in, when the light gets in of your gets into your eyes, if your lens are convex, it creates, it refracts, and we will explain this later on, it refracts or bends inside into a kind of like, you know, it, a, a focal point, okay? So as it gets in, I think I've, I've got, okay, here. So if you have a convex lens, as the light goes in, whatever you're seeing, that light as it passes through will, will refract, okay, or will bend the light into this kind of like angle, okay? So it bends the light that way, all right? And this one you will, we, we will explain this, I will explain this later on. What is that significance of this? Okay, all right, next. Oh, I think there are a few more questions. The job of the lens, I think in your worksheet still, okay, the job of the lens is to focus. Yeah, so the next word is focus, the next word is light, C, focal point and refracted, okay? So this is a convex lens. The job of this lens is to focus the light so we can see. The point at which the rays cross is called the focal point, okay, the focal point. The light is blank as it goes into and it, as it comes back out. The light is refracted or bent. Okay, I hope you got that. All right, moving on. As I said, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? But no, that's okay. God has given us a brain and we can catch up. And go back to this video if you have problems, okay? Next. There we go. The job of this lens is to focus the light so we can see. The point at which the rays cross is called the focus or the focal point. The light is refracted as it goes into the retina and as it comes back out. Okay, just 
um, you know, just a advertisement, I should say, for a break. Okay, can you see black dots? Okay, please answer and just do it really quickly. Can you see black dots? Uh, yes or no? This is an optical illusion. What do you think? I can see black dots. Okay, so some answers here are saying they keep they keep uh, changing from white to black and then to white. That's true. Is this normal uh, thing? <laughs> this good thing? Yes, it is normal, and there's nothing wrong with it because it's that's why it's called an optical illusion, and we will know why later on. Okay, but just to tell you, this this photo actually it has no black dots, okay? That's the truth. It's just because uh, there are black squares and, you know, our eyes are kind of like, it mixes it, it plays a little bit, which is why it looks like there are black dots. But the truth is there's no blacks, okay? Just black squares. All right, moving on. And I know this is quite a lot of words, but as I said, you can take a, a photo of it um, and you can back, come back to this. Okay, so number one, this is the steps on how we can actually see. Okay, how do we see? These are the steps. When we look at an object, number one, light reflected from the object goes through the pupil of your eye. And then the iris, you remember? The, the bigger circle than the pupil, the one that has different colors. Okay, so it it's not just for colors and for beauty. The iris, a muscle that controls the size of the pupil, allows the correct amount of light to enter the eye. Okay. So when you look at an object, after that, the muscles or the iris will allow correct amount of light. Number three, the cornea and the lens would focus, as you can see, it goes from layer, la layer to layer going inside your eye. So the cornea and the lens focus the light onto the retina. You remember the retina? The back part of, or the back wall of your eye. Okay, so it focuses it there because when it reaches the retina, okay, your, it will actually take that and, you know, take that and bring that to the optic nerve so that it can be carried onto your brain and your brain can therefore. Let's go through this. Number four, an inverted image formed on the retina. Okay, that's why when we look at this again, so as, it, as the light is ref ref sorry, refracted, okay, the picture that you will see, if you see a pen like this or um, uh, a marker, if you see a marker like this outside, as it goes into the back of the retina, it kind of like switches it onto an inverted position, okay, as it refracts, and then as that, the impulse is carried to the brain, it flicks it back up to see, so that we may be able to see it the right way up, okay? So, Number four, an inverted image is formed at the back of the wall of your eye or the retina. The retina is made up of light sensitive cells called the photoreceptors. And then number five, oh, I can't see this very well. You see it here. Number five, when the image forms onto the photo, on the photoreceptors in the retina, chemical reactions produce an electrical impulse that travel up to the optic nerve to take it to your brain. And number six, your brain sorts out the image, as I said, so instead of being inverted, you can see it the right way up, okay? So that's the stages of how we see. I imagine the complexity of this so it really, if you, you know, any, anybody who studies any parts of the body, 
you know, can really just be amazed of how God made each part of our body. That's how wonderfully we are made. Okay, next. Okay. What is, the, what is a, an ophthalmologist? An ophthalmologist is a doctor. Okay, who specializes in examining and diagnosing and treating your eyes. Whereas an optometrist is a medical professional, not necessarily a doctor. And they're the ones who can actually, you know, they're the ones who prescribe our glasses. Yeah, they can examine our eyes and they're the ones who prescribe glasses. So if you have problems of your eyes, for example, and you need treatment, um, like surgery or things like that, the, the doctor who will see you first will be an ophthalmologist. But if you need to, you know, have glasses, then you'll be an optometrist. Okay, next. Right, here you will compare the test, the kind of test, and um, the description of that. Okay, so an, a visual acuity test is a test where a person reads an eye chart and which you will see later on and will measure to see how well you, you see at various uh, distances, okay? So that's a visual acuity, acuity test or a Snellen chart on an, or an eye chart, okay? So this is, uh, a test so that we can, you know, to tell how far we can see. A visual field test is actually a test that will measure um, our visual uh, or our peripheral vision or the things that we can see on the side of, you know, on the side, not in the center of our eye, but on the side. Next, tonometry test is the other one, the other test that determines the pressure inside your eye. And we will see this later on. We will, we, you know, we will appreciate it more as we describe this specific uh, problem with the eye called glaucoma. Okay, next. Right, we mentioned earlier on, during the video, there are rods and cones, cones. Okay, so the rods are photoreceptors Cones are also photoreceptors, but they're the ones actually, the rods, you know, so that you won't get uh, confused. That's why I put a cane there. It's like a rod, yeah? You know, like when you're in the dark, it's better, you can see better with a rod. So that, and these photoreceptors can actually give us the black, black white, and gray uh, color and help us see in the dark. Okay, so these are the most, um, major colors that we see. With the cones, these are the photoreceptors that help us see colors. And these are the problems actually with people who are colorblind. And we'll discuss that further. Okay, next. Right, this time we're going to take a break. I think we're just about right on time. We're going to take a break. Close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes for about 20 seconds. Just rest your eyes. We have been, you have been, all of us have actually been using the internet for how many hours now and we really need to rest our eyes. Okay. All right, back on track, moving on. We are now going to compare our eyes, human eyes with uh, that of three different animals, okay? Okay, so eagles, how are our eyes compared to the eagle's eyes? Now, our eyes could probably see, you know, quite a lot of, you know, quite a lot of things from a distance. We can see the stars in the night, even if it's millions of light years away. However, the eagles can actually see eight times farther. And we are told that they're kind of like how, like they can zoom in, you know, they can zoom in. That's how God created them. So they can detect, you know, little rats from a far distance. And then 
However, they cannot see well at, at, at night. So they can see eight times better than us, but they cannot see well at night compared to this animal. So night owls are predators at night. They can see very well at night, and this is really a good fact. So if these are the owl's eyes, you know, the owl's head can actually turn up to here. So 270 degrees. So not really like, you know, all the way around, but almost all the way around, okay? So 270 degrees. So if the eye, okay, so if, if the owl is looking here, it can actually move its head all the way to the back and there. Imagine. Okay, so next one, a mantis shrimp. Okay, apparently if the man has, I know we mentioned earlier on that we have probably millions of cones, but three main cones, um, the mantis can see so much more colors compared to us. Three main, which is, you know, the, the primary colors. And then but the mantis can see 16 different kinds of cones and it's, it can move its eyes independently. So if this eye, the right eye is probably looking at the right, the left eye can look at the left or above, okay? Our eyes can only go, I look here, and I look to the left, I look to the right, but you know, we can move our eyes that way, but it cannot go in different directions, right? But the mantis shrimp can do that. Okay. Right, moving on. Can you see here the different kind of pupil, the different shape of the pupil? So the top is a man's eye and the bottom one is a goat's eye. Can you see the difference? I'm sure you can. Our eyes are circular or round, and the goat's one is more of like a slit. Okay? But they can still see. Apparently, Jonah's friend has a slit eye, but he can he has no problems, eye problems. Also, the horse or the, you know, um, uh, a stallion also has a kind of like an oblong-shaped pupil and here you can see this and, and this is an elk actually you can see the um a reflection of the photographer in the eye of this elk okay so you and uh, mickey mouse that's just to make you smile next here is another optical illusion can you see the circles moving i'm sure you can but because they're just pictures, they don't move. It's just our eyes, you know, creating that distraction. Next, right, number seven. Now we are now going to differentiate a camera with our eyes, our human eyes. Okay, compare the feature of the eye camera by finishing the table. Feature in a camera, okay, we have the aperture is like the pupil, okay? The aperture is like the pupil. It controls how much light it is let in. Now the lens part of the camera, okay? Focuses the light and the shutter, I'm sure you've seen this before. The shutter is the one that kind of like closes here inside, you know, it kind of like captures it. So when you press the button, it cl clicks and you can see it going like it captures the light in or, or blocks it. So it's similar to the eyelid. So when we close our eyes like this, it's similar to the shutter in the camera. And the film is like a, our retina. It receives the light, okay? So that means it's inside the camera. Or nowadays, of course, we've got our uh, memory or memory cards, okay? The, one of the differences, Okay, let's now going to differentiate our similarity and difference. Similarities, they both have a lens to focus as mentioned. They both have light sensitive screen where the image is formed. And then when it converts the light energy 
Where is it processed? The eye and the digital camera produce electric signals. A film camera does not, you know, I mean the digital one. So it produces electrical signals. And which way up does the image form in both? The image in both actually have focuses. The image made in both the camera and the eye is also inverted. And then it, it does it kind of like it corrects it afterwards it reaches the brain or as it reaches inside the camera. The difference is the lens is focused by changing shape in the eye. The lens is focused by changing position in the camera. How do the types of image made by each compare? The image made on the retina or the back of the eye is virtual and cannot be saved. And of course, the camera, we have our memory stick or memory card. And of course, with us as people, when we see things, we probably can have it, you know, picture in our brains and have it in our memory. How are the image captured and kept? The retina has light sensitive cells where there is a chemical reaction and of course it's as i said earlier on it's kept in the memory card in the camera okay next okay i mentioned this earlier on the snellen chart now we will see okay i'm sure many of you have seen this before what is the meaning of your 2020 vision okay so when you say what um 2020 vision it means that you can see 20 feet. So the first 20 is you. The next 20 is other people with no eye problems, OK? So the first 20 is you. The next one is other people uh, with no visual impairment or visual problems. OK, so. Uh, this just to show you this, I'm going to talk about this later, shortly, just shortly. So that's the Snellen chart. This is where you go to um, an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. You will see this chart or the Snellen chart or eye chart, and they will actually let you cover one eye, cover the other eye, and let you read the letters according to the distance. And they will, you know, if you have a bigger area or room, they will place you in different positions and let you read the letters. Okay. What is visual impairment? A visual impairment is a kind of visual loss. Just write down visual loss. Next. All right. This is just another optical illusion. Can you see uh, that the other lines are actually getting smaller? Or are they the same? I think this one is very clear. It, it's the same, okay? It doesn't go smaller. It's still the same. Next. Oh, where did that go? We were gonna talk about 2020 vision. Let me just go through this quickly so that, yes, okay. All right, this is number eight. Before we go to that glaucoma, let me just take you back to this 2020 because it's in your number eight with reference to the eye chart explain 2020 vision. Okay, so your 2020 vision is you can see the letters that is being shown there. Okay, you can see the letters 20 feet away with someone who reads it without visual impairment 20 feet away. Okay, so you can see the letters 20 feet away compared to someone who can read that those letters and they have no visual impairment at 20 feet away as well. What if you were told that you have a 2070 vision? Okay, that's your letter B question. 2070 vision means you can read the letters at 20 feet compared to someone with no visual problems who can read those same letters 70 feet away. Is that understood? You can read that those letters 20 feet. So you see that 2070 there, number three, 
2070, you can read those at 20 feet away, while someone with no difficulty of no problems with eye, their eyes, they can read it at 70 feet away. Okay? So that means if you're 2070, you have a problem, okay, with your eyesight or your vision. Right. Moving on now to the different impairments or eye problems. Uh, what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is the increased pressure inside the eye. Remember that ball inside there? There's, a lot, there's pressure inside. Remember that's actually filled with fluid here. And so that, is, uh, that has high pressure. Sometimes when there's no, um, you know, if there's increase in, in fluid production and there's very little coming out, then it actually creates more pressure inside. What is it going to do if there's more pressure inside your eyeballs? It impinges on the retina or the optic nerve and therefore you cannot see very well. So this is one cause actually of people getting blind. All right. Um, the cause of this is eye strain, or sometimes, you know, um, when you when you inherited like uh, disease, uh, like diabetes from your parents or your you know relatives, and this can actually cause that. Um, treatment for this: eye drops, laser, and surgery. Eye drops, laser, and surgery. Cataracts. Now, this is actually a cloudy film covering your the lens of your eyes. It's like having a, you know, uh, instead of that clear, uh, transparent film on your eyes, it actually has this kind of like opaque or um, cloudy material on your eye. And this is also another cause of blindness. And usually this is uh, caused by people who are aging, people who have diabetes or things that, um, uh, you know, things that, have, that we have, or uh, people have actually inherited from their parents or their relatives. Treatment for this is surgery. <laughs> Next, we have strabismus or cross eye, and I'm sure you've seen this on people. Um, and also the wall eye, instead of you know the uh, the circle of your eye or the iris and your pupils moving to the center, it's actually on the side of your eye, okay, or wall eye. All right. Most important thing here is that we don't stare at people who have these problems, and we also don't make fun of them, okay. Right, so this uh, strabismus uh, or misalignment of the eye, uh, we can actually sort this out, out by surgeries. Um, yeah, and this is caused by, uh, you know, the due to the eye muscles, okay? Next, oh, this is just a uh, kind of like reminder for I know that it says thou shalt not murder for uh, commandment number six, but you know it's it's really to make sure that people are feeling uh, at home or much more comfortable with us, even if they have problems with their eyes, and that we don't actually um, cause any um, conflict with them. Next other problem, I know these are too many words. The problem is esotropia, meaning one part of your eyes is towards the center. Hypertropia, one part of the eye is hanging at the top. Yeah, you can see that. Exotropia, towards the, like a wall eye, but only one part of the eye is towards the extreme part of the eye. And hypertropia is like sunset. Okay, and, and these can cause many different uh, problems with your seeing or vision. Next, okay. All right, I'm sure you can say, you will say that the right one has, is longer and the left is actually shorter. The truth is they're the same length. Uh, this is just, just another optical illusion. Okay, next. 
This is another eye problem called conjunctivitis. Remember what I said earlier on? It's the covering of the white part of your eye and your eyelids. Okay, so this, are, this is the inflammation of the thin layer of the tissue that covers the front of the eye or conjunctiva. Okay, what can we do with conjunctivitis? Uh, we can have eye drops or um, flushes, you know, that special water flush. Uh, or we can also have ointments and um, probably antibiotics if there's a lot of infection. Color blindness uh, or color vision deficiency. When we, uh, I spoke to you about this earlier on. This is a problem with your cones. These are usually inherited and usually men who are, um, you know, who have this trouble or problem. Okay, uh, colorblind people sometimes only see green and they cannot see anything else or they can probably see only grayish, okay? And how do we correct this? Uh, there are many things that people can actually do now when you go to doctors. Many people now have corrective glasses. They can just put on a, uh, a special kind of glasses and they can see different colors. Um, and also they can um, have uh, you know, for things that are inherited, for the people who have inherited color blindness, most of the time, you know, it's untreatable, but uh, they can also go treat the underlying disease. Like um, if they have glaucoma or if they have cataracts, that can be treated first and the color blindness usually will also be treated. Okay, just to mention, because we're actually mentioning about blindness, uh, for people who are blind, there are, um, nowadays we, we have people uh, who are registered. They can belong to, when they say I am registered blind, that means they have gone to their local council and they've gone through, uh, you know, tests and uh, so, so that they may be, and they, they are actually written in the register so that the council can actually provide uh, access or give them um, support with their vision loss. Okay, now we're going to see another uh, another video. Jay, please. We're almost done. The next one and after the next video. Thank you. I don't know if they can see that. Yeah, they can. What did you do in that? Almost 2,000 years ago, the Roman philosopher Seneca peered at his book through a glass of water. Suddenly, the text below was transformed the words magically became clear. But it wasn't until a millennium later that that same principle would be used to create the earliest glasses. Today, glasses can help millions of people with poor vision due to uncorrected refractive errors. The key to understanding what that means lies with the term refraction, the ability of a transparent medium like glass, water, or the eye to change the direction of light passing through it. The eye has two main refractive surfaces, the cornea and the lens. Ideally, these surfaces work together to refract light in a way that accurately focuses light onto the retina, the layer of light-sensitive tissue at the back of the eye that works with the brain to give rise to vision. But many people develop refractive errors, either during childhood as their eyes are growing or in later life as their eyes age. Imperfections in the cornea and lens cause refracted light to be focused in front of or behind the retina, making images appear blurry. People with refractive errors can still see color, movement, and light, but the details of what they're looking at are out of focus. People experience refractive errors in different ways, owing to differences in their eyes. In some, light refracts too much, and in others, too little. Eyes with a focal point in front of the retina are called myopic, or short-sighted. They can see close objects clearly, but those far away are out of focus. 
But when the focus point is behind the retina, people are hyperopic, or long-sighted. For them, objects close up are unfocused, but distant objects are crystal clear. Finally, some people have a cornea with a non-spherical shape that causes astigmatism, a form of out-of-focus vision that makes all objects seem blurred, whether close or far. As we age, our eyes face new challenges. When we're young, the lens of the eye is flexible and can change shape to bring images into focus, something called accommodation. This keeps objects in focus when we shift our gaze from far to near. But as we get older, the lens becomes less flexible and can't change shape when we want to look at near objects. This is called presbyopia, and it affects adults starting around the age of 40 years. Myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, and presbyopia. Each of these is a refractive error. Nowadays, we can fix them all with glasses or contact lenses, which work by refocusing light so it strikes the retina precisely. It's even possible to correct vision with surgery, using lasers that change the shape of the cornea and alter its refractive properties. But glasses remain the most popular. By using carefully crafted lenses to steer light to exactly the right spot on the retina, a person's clear vision can be restored. We've come a long way since Seneca's discovery and the crude glasses of yesteryear. In 1727, a British optician named Edward Scarlett developed the modern style of glasses, which are kept in place with arms which hook over each ear. Today's glasses take their inspiration from that design, but they're also much more precise and personal. Each pair is tailored for an individual to bring out their unique powers of sight. So if you're one of the 500 million people with a problem with close or far vision, or both, there's a pair of glasses out there waiting to reveal a whole new world that's hiding in plain view. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving on. So refraction is the bending of light, and we referred to the refractive errors earlier on, myopia, um, nearsightedness, hyperopia, farsightedness, astigmatism, when you have different refractions, and also presbyopia, the problem of old people when they cannot see actually near and they have to bring the Bible or whatever they're reading quite far in order for them to see. Okay. Uh, this is just a repetition and just explains uh, what, how actually nearsightedness um, can happen. And this is also, uh, you can see the different light coming through as compared to the light that gets into the retina. Uh, this is in Genesis 48, chapter, uh, chapter 48, verse 10, of course, written in Greek. And none of us read Greek. No one except pastor. <laughs> okay. Anyway, here is the translation in English. Okay. And the question is, what kind of... Um, what kind of problem does uh, Jacob have? I think it, it's actually, it says there, uh, now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him and his father kissed them and embraced them. So the answer is presbyopia, okay? The problem that Jacob has or Israel is uh, presbyopia. Question number 12. All the refractive errors can be corrected by wearing the right glasses or contact lens. The answer is true. Number 13, this is how you do eye care. If something, a speck comes into your eye, uh, uh, um, an insect gets into your eye, don't rub them because sometimes the insect emits some you know, uh, chemicals and it gets into your eye and it will cause more problems. So what you can do is get a basin of water and make sure you know wash your face uh, so get uh, pour water into the basin immerse your face inside you know where the water is and then open your eyes while it's soaked in the water until whatever speck or insect is, is, is in your eye it will actually come out 
if your face is submerged in the water. And that's how to, to do um, eye care. Okay, how do we strain our eyes? We strain our eyes when we look at internet for a long time or when we do driving uh, for our parents, for example, or when you, uh, older pathfinders, when you drive, how long is long, okay? They said apparently more than three and a half hours is long enough. So what you need to do is turn off your internet or you know go outside and expose, uh, you know, look at things that are, you know, nature, look at nature or stop and park your car and look at other things um, instead of just the road or the internet or phone. Rest, and that's how we rest our eyes. We can, you know, rub our hands together like this and put it over your eyes like that to rest our eyes. And of course, take your eyes off from whatever you're looking at if you're reading. Okay, make sure as well, don't read or, um, yeah, don't read if the eyes, I mean, if the, if the light is too dark for you. Never read because it will strain your eyes more. Okay, so the 20-20-20 rule is for every 20 minutes that you're, you know, you're reading or you're looking at the internet, for every 20 minutes, look away. 20 meters away for 20 seconds, okay? After 20 minutes, look away, 20 meters, look up 20 meters um, for 20 seconds. That is how you can rest your eyes. If you cannot see well, inform your parents and go see a doctor. What is the meaning of the eyes are the window to the soul? There's actually two meanings of that. The first is, uh, found in Matthew 6, 22 to 23. You know, when, when people actually look at your eyes and they will, they can say, they can see that you're actually, uh, you look very sad, but you haven't said anything. Why? Because your eyes can actually, you, it, your eyes give it away. Okay. People will say, I, I can see that you're, you're sad because I can see it in your eyes. Okay. That's the eyes to windows to the soul. And the, the second uh, explanation is garbage in, garbage out. Psalm 101, verse 3, I will not look at anything vile. If we expose ourselves too much on violence, sometimes when we look at things, even if someone is not angry, we've, we can sense that they are angry. Why? Because that's how we expose ourselves to at things that are too violent. Porn and violence desensitizes whoever is being exposed to that. It calluses the conscience and it actually, you know, it sort of like numbs our hearts. So if you watch violence all the time or killing or that, when you see someone on the road, and someone gets killed, you don't have compassion for them. Why? Because your heart is already numbed from watching porn or violence. Okay, you don't value people when, you know, uh, the opposite sex. Uh, because we are watching too much porn. This is really not pleasing to God. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, honorable, right, and pure and lovely and good report, dwell on these things. So if we want to expose ourselves to only on the honorable things, okay? This is just another optical illusion. Effects of video games, as you know, it's there's good, there's bad. Some things that are bad, you know, you stay too late at night and then you prefer games over school. Effects of social media, addiction, cyberbullying. And then this one, First Samuel 16, 7, we should never judge. That's the explanation of that. Uh, when you see someone probably who is, you know, uh, not too, you know, they're not probably... Uh, well clothed or their their clothes are tattered doesn't mean to say that we're going to judge them to say that oh you you haven't really washed yourself or you're you haven't done well for yourself but we never know some people who are who are simply dressed are actually billionaires sometimes you know we we, we are not to judge okay that's the main thing there not to judge when we look at people remember god looks at the heart 
and we should too, but we cannot. So it's not our job to judge. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, what does this mean? It means that we, we will not allow ourselves to be distracted. If there are things that are, you know, more enticing, we will just focus on Jesus and meaning. That means that we need to concentrate on studying the word of God and watching things that will get us closer to God. And that's how we can expose ourselves to. Making it easy for the visually impaired. Let's not judge them, help them, make them feel comfortable, talk to them, um, and help, you know, help them in any way. I've told you about this earlier on regarding optical illusion. And the red marks there are the different answers to the, uh, under, um, the blank spaces. I was going to show you this actually, but um, I think I'll leave it some other time. It's just a um, one of the origami, which you can do. You can watch this link which we have now, which you can see now, but I'm just gonna show you. It just looks like this. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I made earlier on. And that's how you do the origami. And lastly, I praise you for I am fearfully made, fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are God's works and we know that very well.